a name that everybody in Ireland is familiar with. After speaking to people that he knew in his childhood, I discovered he was raised in Darndale and the Dunhamid area of Dublin. And as a teen, he started to get involved in petty crime, car theft, and like so many, trying to obtain material status to come away from poverty. And in an area with such high unemployment and drug dealers are always hiring new recruits, Robbie gained a reputation for violence as a young teenager and became involved with serious gangsters in the city. To really understand who Robbie Lawler was as a person and how he became involved in one of the most shocking murders in Irish history and met his fate on April the 4th in 2020, you have to go back to 2005. The murder of Mark Byrne, the first documented one that was connected to Robbie Lawler. Mark Byrne was a drug dealer in the Tala area of the city and had gotten into an argument with Robbie Lawler in Mountjoy Prison in 2005. The police believed that this was the motive for the murder. Mark had been freed from the North Dublin prison on day release when he was killed. He was scheduled for full release in August and was due back in prison on that evening. He was on temporary release on compassionate grounds so he'd probably lost a relative. He was approached by another man on the corner of Berkeley Road and Eccles Street at five to 10 in the morning. The attacker shot him three times in the face, once in the head before escaping on foot. The injured man was tended to on the scene by a medical team, but died at around 10.45 a.m. There was a number of witnesses to the attack that happened on a busy street filled with traffic and pedestrians. This was a brutal example of Robbie's vengeance and that would only grow and in 2009 he began to get further involved in the criminal underworld. In his childhood estate of Darndale there was a young man known as B.A. His real name was Anthony Ayodeji. He was left in a critical condition from a gun attack in which a baby's life was put at risk. Two people was arrested and Robbie Lauder was one of these people. Anthony was of Lebanese descent and he was looking after a female friend's 22 month old baby in a friend's car. When a man ran up to the car and fired five shots through the driver's seat window, the baby who was either on the victim's lap or on the passenger seat received minor injuries just underneath the baby's eye. The attack which occurred in Darndale, North Dublin last Friday evening shocked the local community as well as the police. They described the shooting as reckless. It shows the level of callousness involved, a total disregard for the baby. The police were satisfied the shooting was over a personal grievance, which had racist elements, they said, and was not in any way linked to gangland activity or drug dealing. It emerged yesterday that a relative of the baby who was serving a sentence in prison for a serious crime went berserk to hear the news of the actual suspect that they believed it was Robbie Lawler. People even said to the papers at the time of this attack, all the way back in 2008, that Robbie Lawler was even meant to have apologised for nearly killing the child. This demonstrated his reckless nature and his tendency to switch and try to kill people. He fired five shots into that car. He could quite easily have killed Anthony Ayodeji. And the murder that was connected to Robbie, that would go on to have the biggest effect on his life, was in 2009. The murder of David Fred Lynch, rest in peace. He was known to the police as an associate of the leaders of one of the rival factions. Lynch was from Kulak and had previously sustained injuries after being shot outside a pub in 2006. He was also one of the prime suspects in a North Dublin shooting as well. An initial examination of the body indicated that Lynch had been shot three times in the head with a handgun. His body was found in a pool of blood in Wasteland at 4pm yesterday. The grim find was made by a woman walking her dog in the local area. The body was laying ridden in undergrowth for several hours, hidden from the balconies of the apartments just yards away. Cars cannot access the wasteland, they said, which overlooks the only road onto it. The raised section of ground where Lynch was found is less than half a mile from where he lived. Last night, the guardian was trying to establish if Lynch had been lured to the field or had been murdered elsewhere, and his body was then dumped there. Robbie was connected to this murder. Officers suspected that Lynch had received a phone call at a hotel where he was staying at on Sunday, asking him to meet him on Bow Camp Lane to plan the attack on a rival gang in an increasingly violent Darndale drugs war. But it was thought that Lynch turned up to his associate and they pulled a gun and shot him four times in the head. The suspected hitman 
remained in custody and uh, Robbie Lawler was uh, 24 at this time. Under the new legislation brought in for gangs that allows detectives to quiz them for a week, the police may go to the Dublin court to apply for more time as well. The man's girlfriend was also remanded in custody, but she was not connected directly to the murder. She's been questioned on suspicion of withholding information. The pair was arrested at a city centre hotel and the man was detained for a murder attempt last year arranged by Lynch's own gang. They believed back then that Robbie Lawler was a gun for hire. He'd worked for both sides of the Darndale drugs feud and the shooting last year in which a man was shot and injured in broad daylight in front of his child is believed to have been ordered by the associates of Lynch. This showed Robbie was capable of, of even hurting his friend one year later, Noel Dean, he owed a lot of money for cannabis and Robbie was alleged to have been his friend and also was the man that they hired to kill him. He was the chief suspect in the murder and it was later revealed during the inquiry that Robbie Lauder was meant to have drank tea with the mother of the victim, Noel Dean, after he had killed her son. In a twisted act of treachery, it said. Robbie went on the run in England after a gun cartridge was found with the names of three police officers engraved onto it. All of these police officers were investigating Robbie Lawler for connections to murders. They said that the dangerous Kulak criminal is believed to be heavily involved in two other gangland murders and a number of reckless gun attacks and armed robberies. A source explained that the individual is a complete nutcase, they said, a, a loose cannon. The fact he sat down and drank tea with the mother of his victim, how cold-hearted is that? It is believed that the notorious gunman murdered Dean over a cannabis death. Detective Inspector Scott said that on the night of Dean's death, he'd been at a funeral arising from a totally separate incident. There was a traveller's christening also on at the time, with up to 600 people present, and another christening in a different part of the pub. The police have gone through CCTV footage to identify people that was there, and all the potential witnesses. There was 40 people that was never identified. And nobody ever wrote a statement to say that they seen Robbie Lawler pull the trigger on that murder. Robbie Lawler has 125 convictions. One of them in 2013 was for a cash box that he stole from McDonald's in Donnymead, during which a handgun was pulled out at a security guard and the money was stolen. If he wasn't debt collecting or shooting people, he was into armed robberies, which is another part of his psychotic nature, said detectives involved in cases. Lorda received a 30-month sentence, uh, slightly less than his accomplice, and the sentence was, was reduced to 23 months after appeal. Robbie Lawler was usually in and out of prison. He, had, he did a lot of prison sentences, mainly for traffic offences, to be honest, but they always tried to keep him in for as long as possible. The IRA had a massive influence on the underworld in Ireland. And two brothers, Alan Ryan and Vincent Ryan, were regarded as senior figures in the real IRA. They were both shot dead in North Dublin. Shots were fired at Ryan's funeral in apparent show of strength. The men's attire included green military-style jumpers and combat trousers, along with scarves covering their faces, dark sunglasses and black berets. They were believed to have kept the peace between the gangs and also extorted the dealers. But the IRA never dealt drugs. With their death, the power balance moved to the notorious Mr Big, who was connected to the murder but could not be named for legal reasons. He was from Kudok and his main right-hand man, alleged hitman, was Ken Finn. He was alleged to have been responsible for the murder of the notorious IRA brothers. The battle for control in Ireland, Dublin.